Hello, this one's going to be a little shorter. Uh, this is uh, the fourth one where we're going to do some ge uh, geometry applications. And uh, these are some formulas that describe the volume and surface area of these various three-dimensional shapes. You don't need to memorize these, but you do need to be able to use them. Uh, and we'll do a couple examples of how you have to use them uh, here. First of all, um, the radius of something round is the distance from the center to the points on the edge. So if you have a three-dimensional sphere, it should be that same distance around no matter which way you go. So it should be the same radius that way, oops, that way, or that way, or that way, etc. Um, the height of a cylinder is the distance from the top of the bottom. Same thing with the height of a cone. Uh, by the way, uh, let's talk a little bit about volume and surface area. So the volume is how much three-dimensional space there is inside of the object. Think of it as how much liquid it can hold. Uh, and volume is always measured in cubic units. For example, one cubic centimeter is sometimes written as one centimeter cubed like this. That represents the amount of space that a little cube that is one centimeter on each side takes up. So volume is always measured in that. And surface area is like the amount of uh, surface on the outside, the amount of two-dimensional stuff. You can think of that as like the amount of paper you would need to cover it or the amount of paint you would need to cover it. And surface area is always measured in square centimeters or square miles or square inches or whatever your units are. So a square, that, that much surface area, uh, when you have a centimeter by centimeter square, is called one square centimeter. And you can also write it as one centimeter squared. So uh, they're measuring different kinds of things. Volume is an amount of three-dimensional space, like an amount of liquid it might take to fill in there. Surface area is like the amount of paint it would take to cover the outside. Uh, so let's uh, do an example here. Let's find a formula for the radius of a cone in terms of its volume and height. So what this means is if we want a formula for the radius, that means it should look like r equals something. And if it's in terms of its volume and height, then that in terms of its volume and its height, that means the stuff over here will have v and h in it somehow. So anyways, we already have a formula for the volume in terms of the radius and the height. That's this one here. And we're going to get r by itself on one side of that equation. Uh, but first we have to get r squared by itself. We're going to do extraction of roots. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 3. On the right side, one-third times three is one, so that cancels out. So now let's get the pi and h on the other side. By dividing by pi times h, that will cancel out the pi and the h. And that will make this equation look like 3v over pi h equals r squared. Now, to just get r by itself, you can just take the square root of both sides. However, in this case, when we're talking about a radius, that's a length or a distance, and it doesn't make any sense to have a negative radius. You can't have like a cone that has less than zero centimeters of radius. So we're just going to use the positive one. And that should be the correct answer for that. Uh, for exercise three, this is one for you to do. Uh, this time, this is about a pyramid with a square base instead of the last one, which is a cone with a circular base. 
and it gives you the sh the uh, the volume of it. So you can plug that in for V. Twenty one point six four is the height, and you need to find what S makes that work. So that's an exercise for you to do.